are working together to impact and influence their societies. So true. So that's what we're going to do, right? But that means lowering the denominational walls yeah. and building up the body of Christ. Yeah, and then we'll start to make an impact again. We're on the retreat at the moment in the West. But, it, it's, but the thing is, we've got no generals to lead the fight back. Because none of our bishops are thinking strategically. None of our pastors are thinking strategically. Or if they do, they only think about their congregation. How to make their little congregation grow. And they don't want to work with others, because they're scared if they work with others, they'll lose members. Yeah, the view of them will tarnish the, the best example to us, and I will put this on record, the best example to us is the Amish, but minus the conflict averse, don't go out and evangelize culture. If we adopt the pattern of the Amish, or something similar sure. that's influenced by what they do, but we combine that with evangelical zeal and the willing to stand yeah. up and to defend our faith, then we'll start to make impacts. That's good. Like the Amish have made an impact without even trying. They're one of the few churches that continue to grow because the way they've built localized communities means that they're building families. And they're so determined to stand by what they believe, yeah. Yeah. they've won for themselves exceptions in the law that no other American has. Yeah. And they will, uh, they don't, they don't, their youth are like, they you go out and experience the world. And but then they come back. Tell me, tell, because if, we don't want you to leave because of that. Yeah. So you go do that. And then come back. And then come back. Yeah, and this want. is and this is. I, I honestly think we've got a lot to learn from people like Amish, Mennonites, Absolutely. Bruderhof. Absolutely, I agree. But we also have corrections to give to the Amish, yeah. Mennonites, and Bruderhof, yeah, sure. because because of their commitment to pacifism, yes. they exactly. avoid anything that could lead to conflict, right. which means that they avoid doing evangelism. Right. So if we can combine their strengths whilst avoiding their weaknesses, right. we'll be able to make an impact together. Yeah. Anyway, brothers, peace be with you. Yeah. Glad to have yep. you here. I'll be out here hanging out. So. And I say this to everyone who comes here. Remember, the, G the, the Islamists in this park are looking for oh, yeah. novices yeah. like you yeah. to use in their video propaganda. Yeah. Yeah, they, don't, don't give it to them. Don't give it to them. Already failed. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Brothers, yep. do not give the no. Islamists the propaganda that they yep. seek. Okay, there you go. Thank you. So I'd like I love hearing you in the background of the video. You know, <laughs> I right. love it. Thanks for the support, bro. Sometimes I feel like there's... Actually... All right, that's a question worthy of its own that's video. Good. So what can we do to sort of build networks? Yes. Right. So firstly, we've got to find every and every opportunity for unity. So for instance, lots of Protestants think that you don't venerate the, um, the saints. Yep. Yep. But that's not true. You do. You venerate the 12 apostles and you venerate the four evangelists. So that's something that you can unite with to some degree with the Orthodox and the Catholics. We can all celebrate Christmas. We can all celebrate Easter. We can all celebrate Pentecost. We can try and do that together. Like we can, we can, we can definitely unite around issues of values, around the idea and the importance of the family around the idea of the importance of standing up for life and a pro-life culture. Yeah. We can unite around those things. We can unite around pushing back Islamization in our own countries and then around the world. We can unite to help the persecuted church. So certainly in terms of values and, and politics, we can unite very easily around those issues. And then with a bit of work and a bit of imagination, we can unite around the fact of, um, you know, like other aspects of our faith even right. though we have differences sure sure trying to find that like, common ground yeah like we can we can bless one another we can invite one another around what i would suggest to everybody who likes the idea of what i'm talking about go and look up a community based here in london in the uh, in the acton area okay. called the antioch community these are christians that have come from all over the all over london and all over the country they've moved into the same area acton some are Roman Catholic, some are Orthodox, some are Protestant. They're all integrated into their own denominational church. 
So on a Sunday, the Protestants go to a Protestant church, the Orthodox go to an Orthodox church, the Catholics go to a Catholic church, and they get involved in whatever their particular fellowship is doing in the middle of the week. But when they're not doing that, the, the, the rest of the time, they're in and out of one another's houses, breaking bread, awesome, supporting man. one another, so helping one another, standing with one another through tears and joy, like living uh, with one another. And that's what we need more of, just doing life together. Exactly. Arms and not doing it alone. So any Christian, I say you should organize by constituency, by political constituency. Okay. And you get to know the Christians in that political constituency you don't have to leave the church you're in or not get involved in what that church is doing. But what you do do is when you're not doing that, you get to know your Christian neighbors and you, and you work with one another to live together as community. Is that a, a yeah, fair model for you? Amazing, that's good. Yeah, let's yeah. Visit the Antioch, uh... It's called the Antioch Community based in Acton. Yeah. And a book that will help you with this is called The Benedict Option. The Benedict Option? The Benedict Option. And good books that I would encourage you to read is... Uh, uh, that's the one, The Benedict Option. JC will probably put a screen up. Yeah. Okay, fellas. Is that all right? Yeah, that's perfect. All right. Thank you so much. Peace I'll be here you. hanging out, but thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Take a break. So two brothers came from the US. They've been watching Soko Films for a while. And they wanted to come and say hello. And as you heard, that idea of Christian solidarity is a, an idea that is catching on. People are catching that idea. Brothers and sisters, I hope you're catching that idea. And hopefully from this conversation, you've picked up a very simple model of how we can live out that idea of Christian solidarity without betraying the allegiance that we have to our club civic and NGO churches.